on social media. I got my friend with me today, guys. I got the great Chauncey Fam, and today we're talking about hey, getting started in real estate. So there's a lot of people out there who, who call Chauncey and myself all the time, and they talk about getting into the business, and they don't know what it takes to be a successful real estate agent. Okay. They don't know what it takes to actually get in the business. And that's what we're talking about today. All right. So before we get started and introduce ourselves and go through all that jazz real quick, hop if you're if you're following us right now, okay, you're on my social media as well as Chauncey, make sure you jump in here if you want to interact with us. Okay. We want you to interact with us, number one. Okay. Make sure you jump here on the super chat real quick, log in, leave your messages. Send your information over to us, and we can start talking to you about what your questions are. All right, fam, are you ready? I'm ready. I'm all. I stay ready, so I don't have I know to get you stay ready. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> it, it's it's the great Chelsea fam, y'all. She's always ready. So, real quick, these folks want to get into the real estate get, game. They want to get into real estate. All right. right. First things first. Let's just start with who we are, so they know who they're talking to. How about that? Yes. All right. So, real quick, we're gonna take you guys through this. Um, I'm Sasha. How y'all doing? <laughs> Sasha Chapman. I have been a real estate agent now going on five years. I come from a healthcare executive background and I transitioned into real estate in 2000 and goodness gracious, it was 2015, 16, something like 16. that at this point. 16. I think about it. I actually took the test. I got my license started and I didn't take the exam. Anyway, you can connect with me here. I do run a team Chapman Realtor Group. If you scan this link right right now on the QR code, you would go to my popo, which will give you all of my social media. So I'm the team leader of Chapman Realty Group. I'm a two-time EXP icon agent, which means I can sell a whole lot of houses. And I operate a team. So I went from a individual agent all the way up to a team leader. Okay. And, and, and let's not let's not minimize that though. Like I want to rewind and I, I want people to understand <laughs> who Sasha really is. Okay. So first of all, you guys have to understand that Sasha came from like a super like corporate buttoned up, you know, nine to five gig. And then he came over into real estate and his first full year, first full year, which was actually the pandemic. So 2020 was his first like full time yeah. year in real estate. He sold like $12 million. So like for anyone that's, that's getting into the game, you understand. And so $12 million for those of you that don't understand how kind of like real estate sales volume works. I mean, that's, you know, selling 200, dollars $300,000 houses until all of those houses equals $12 million. So it's a lot, a lot of houses that he sold his first full year in a pandemic. And I'm talking every time the dude would, would call me in the middle of the pandemic. I'm like, what you doing? Well, I'm sitting at home on my couch because I ain't going out. He was out selling houses. He's out showing houses. So so don't, please don't just be like, oh, came okay, from corporate America. You know, run Chapman Realty Group. Like you came out guns That's blazing. True. And you did an amazing, a phenomenal job. So I like to, whenever I talk to people and whenever I have these types of talks, I think it's very important to establish with the audience that like, if they don't have a reason to listen to you, then they're not going to. So they need to understand that you're a boss and that you are a beast at what you do. So what we say here is like, they need to be listening. So yeah, so that's that. Yeah, I slang some houses. I, I can slang some houses. That's for sure. Um, I guess since I got to my horn a little bit, other claim to fame is, I'm a tech kid. I've been coaching folks for a very long time. I've coached youth sports. I coach agents all across the nation. So it's Chauncey. And my claim to fame in real estate is knowing how to connect real estate technology to real estate processes to create better outcomes for our clients and to scale and grow our business. So that's what we do. Now, well, I, uh, I guess I'm trying to be a little humble today, right, CP? Just well, you know, I I ain't never humble. And now and I, then I, there I, is I ain't you, humble. <laughs> the great Chauncey fam. <laughs> um, so. so yeah, so I'll do you want me to just Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Do your thing. Um, so I've been licensed around the same time as Sasha. I got licensed in August of 2016. Initially simply got into the business. I'll be honest with you guys. Um, it was so that I could uh, ball out so we could go to Disney World. Um, we wanted to do some really good trips to Disney World. My husband was our breadwinner. He made tons of money um, in corporate America. So, you know, I made 50, 60 grand at that time. And I said, well, if I can get my real estate license, um, sell a couple of houses, we can go ball out once a year at Disney, spend, you know, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. And that was the right, purpose right, of right. my license. Um, so fast forward from 2016, when I got licensed to about a year and a half later, um, I opened my own brokerage here in Texas. 
Um, that did not quite work out the way that I thought that it would work out. So then um, moved over to EXP Realty in September of 2019, where I've been ever since. Um, so uh, also flip houses um, with my husband. Um, I do coaching. I do speaking. I do a little bit of everything um, in real estate. And so glad you guys are tuning in and hopefully I can be a, a good resource to help you regardless of what it is that you're looking for. All right. Now, here's one thing that Chauncey, he's been a little humble too. Chauncey is the number one recruiting agent of all EXP. Not okay. anymore. Not anymore. I, I I got dethroned, but I'm still like- Someone got you? Top. Somebody got you. Somebody got me. I got dethroned. Um, got so dethroned. People kind of guns blazing, but I'm still up at the top. But I did hold that. I held that seat for uh, for bringing in agents on uh, my front line at the top for about two years. Yeah. Well, in your first two years, let's not let's not call it. Yeah. It was the first two years, yeah. and so you guys got to understand that when someone comes in in the first two years, that is because they can they know what they're doing, right? Yeah. They know how to grow the business, and so that's what we want to talk to you guys about. We want to talk about you know why we got in the business, you know, and what really drives us. So let's just kind of jump on into it. Um, but real quick, uh, we got a, we got a first user popping up here. Uh, we got a newly licensed agent, Tony. Just got your license in Kentucky. Appreciate the stream. Tony, stay on here, man. Be interactive with us. Pop in your questions. We're looking forward to hearing from you. Um, we got someone. Somebody, okay, let's go, CP. All right. Let's keep going, y'all. All right. So real quick, here's the thing. Why do you want to do this? Why did you get into business? I'm going to keep it real with you guys like this. All right. I Yes, I got into it to help my family, without a doubt. Okay. I was making decent money as a healthcare executive. Um, but at the end of the day, man... I, my last couple of years in healthcare was all about me firing people. That's what they wanted me to do. Every single day, I was supposed to go in and figure out how to cut costs, and that meant letting people go. So I ended up firing my friends, and I ended up getting fired. So it was career instability. And frankly, I stopped liking healthcare. I got into healthcare because I was very passionate about helping people. And at the end of the day, it became numbers and widgets. That's what it started becoming. And I just wasn't happy with it. I was really losing myself. And I became a healthcare executive at a young age, meaning that I was starting to top out at a very young age in terms of what my income was. So I was like, okay, I need to do something different. And I had this innate need to build and grow. I had this need that I just wanted to, I wanted to do something and own something. Here's one thing about having a nine to five, six figure job or whatever. I can't give that to my family. Okay. I absolutely can't give that to my kids. It, right. It, it doesn't go to the next generation. It doesn't help you build generational wealth. And I didn't really know at the time, me and CP have talked about this. I didn't know what was going on with me, but I knew that I had to do something that was more tangible, something more special for myself. Right. And I had people say, hey, think about getting to install your own business. And I thought about it. And then I had two bad real estate experiences. I had, I bought my house and agent was, didn't do anything. I didn't even get a closing gift, Right. Um, not that you have to get a closing gift because right now, sometimes you just get some equity people. All right. <laughs> and then the second thing is uh, when I sold my house, I went back to the agent who I bought the house with. She didn't even come for the listing presentation. Right. And so when the guy who actually did the listing presentation, I signed up with him. That boy didn't do anything. <laughs> he didn't do anything. I kept saying to myself, man, you got to be able to do this better, right? I know that I didn't get an open house. I didn't get this. So I was like, okay, I knew I could do it. But I'm just going to tell you guys right now. It was driving me towards financial freedom and something that I could have of my own. Right. And it was the best decision I ever made. CP, mm -hmm. why'd you do it? Um, initially, like I said, I, uh, my husband and I, instead of taking all of our savings and paying for a wedding, um, we first got married. We decided to apply for a home loan. We got approved for it. So instead, we bought a house. Um, fast right, forward right. about a year and a half. Um, from that, we sold that house, bought another house. About a year, year and a half from that, we sold that house, bought another house. Um, and through all of those transactions, um, quite frankly, our realtor sucked. Um, not only that, but I had a very <laughs> close relationship with my loan officer. And my loan officer kept telling me, Chauncey, you would be really, really good in real estate. So along came this light bulb idea of, you know, well, I should get my real estate license since I, I pretty much drugged those transactions over um, to the closing table. Um, so then essentially... Um, I decided to get my license and just do it as a part-time thing alongside with my job, but I very mm -hmm, quickly mm -hmm. got into it 
and realize that like it was my thing. Like I was I was actually good at it. But I will tell you that I always had in the back of my head, and this may resonate with some of you guys that are listening to this that have a job. I always had in the back of my head at any job that I worked at that everybody in management above me that they were dumb. Like, do y'all feel that? Like, like, well, do y'all feel that? Do y'all sometimes when you're at work and nine to five, like, how do you get this job? Because right. How much right. tail how much tail do they really kiss to get that job? And you know they don't know what they're right. talking about. And I always would look at the processes and look at the systems, and I would say, none of this makes sense. Like, y'all, not, none of what y'all got me doing makes any sense. Like, I could literally take what you guys have. And what this company has built and I could make it better and I could make it more efficient just using my brain. So I knew that if I could do that, right, right. someone else's process, that I could ultimately do it for myself. And so that's that's part of why I got in. So Disney World, my realtor sucked and I got tired of talking and, and taking orders from people that I knew um, were not as talented or as smart as I was. And I was like, I'm, I'm done with this. So, yeah, Miss Queen Brown are- says, ouch. Let me, let me tell you guys, this is serious. This is serious. I. As I as I was doing that in healthcare, I'm like, man, this person know what they're doing. And and that was my job. My job was to break down processes and build a better outcome in, in so many ways. And that's and here and here's the thing about that. I want to be we're gonna get into this too. When you start thinking about the skill set that I brought into real estate, I brought that exact same real estate that experience to real estate. It is the most process driven industry with the most broken processes that you'll find. And so many moving variables, when I look at it from an engineering standpoint, I'm like, how come no one has ever done it this way, right? right? And I was like, okay, okay, okay. So if you're cry- if your soul is crying out for something more, and you want to figure something out, and you here's the thing, I'm 42, right? I'm gonna tell you this right now. I'm at a I'm at an age right now where I don't have the patience for the dumb chips. Okay, I just don't have that type of patience anymore. I thought I did, but I don't, right? And sometimes you just need to have something that you grow as your own. I've done the corporate America thing. I can never do that again. Some of you are out there right now dying a slow death by cubicle. Mm-hmm. You go to a job you hate every single day, every single day, and you want to do something different, right? You actually might be the boss at the job. Everyone's talking about this. Doesn't know what he's talking about. Don't know what he's doing. But here's the thing. There's so many paths to being successful as a real estate agent. The thing is this. You need a big why. You need to understand why you get up to do this because I'm going to tell you like this. Right. If you think it's just because of the money, the money won't get your butt up out the bed. Oh no, the money I, won't make that happen. No, it okay. definitely. I, I would agree with that. You definitely have to have kind of a bigger purpose in doing this because um, I, I will say, if you guys, because um, I talk to, to agents all the time and people that are new mm-hmm. getting into business, they're like, oh, I want to be a realtor because I like looking at houses. Like, stop. Like, stop. That is not a reason to be a realtor. If you like going to open houses and you like going to model homes and you like watching Selling Sunset or some other weird ass real estate show that's on television that's not really what real estate is, you are going to get slapped in the face. You're going to get punched in the mouth with reality once you get into this business because that ain't it. Um, So definitely don't chase the money. Don't chase, you know, other people's, uh, somebody said money gets my butt out of the bed, uh, Matthew Dickey. Um, It gets my... It gets me out of bed too. I'm just saying, but but I do love the process, and I have fallen in love with kind of the process that gets me the money. Um, and so I would definitely agree with having a purpose beyond money. Money can be one of those purposes, but having money beyond that um, is super duper important because this is not for the faint of heart. Yeah. So, so let's transition a little bit if you want into the mindset and explain, um, or not mindset, but the process. Um, yeah, let's go through the process real quick. And some are not in Texas, so. Um, yep. As Sasha's pulling this up, I would say I would recommend whatever state that you're in, if you want to get started in real estate, literally, y'all, Google. Yep. Can I say that, Sasha? Can I just tell them to Google? Yeah, like, it's, it's really not that hard, guys. If you want to get into business, <laughs> there you will find 10 million websites that tells you what you need. It's your state to that. figure out how to get there. So Perfect. this is what you have to do if you're in Texas, okay? One, you need to check your eligibility. And what we're talking about that. And we're talking about that you need to figure out, eight, you got to be 18, at least 18 years old, okay? You're going to have to look at your background. Do you have any failings and things like that? Now, they will look at that, and you need to talk to TREC to see if they will overlook certain things because that goes on a case-by-case basis sometimes, number one. Um, two, you got classes to take, and it's only six, 
Let me be very, very clear. In Texas, in Texas you, is one of the most strenuous states, actually, Sasha. Most states do again? not have classes. I said Texas is one of the most strenuous states. Most states have right. like your less classes. Yeah. And it's only here's, here's not, it's six classes. And the reality of that is this. You can knock out these classes in a week if you want to. If you yeah. want to drag it out, sure, you can drag it out. But the classes are not going to teach you how to be a successful real estate agent. It's not going to teach you how to be a realtor. It's going to teach you the legalities of real estate in your state, and that's it. But running a business and being successful is totally different. Okay, so then you're going to do your TREC application number three here. And then from there, you're going to get fingerprinted. Once you get fingerprinted, you pass the background check, and now you have to pass the national and state exam. Once you do that, you can you just find which broker you want to be with, and you sign up, and then you join your local MLS board. Now, I say all this real quickly, but understand that this can, process can happen over the course of, what, three weeks or three yeah. years. That is up to you how long you're going to make it take, okay? So that's how, that's how it works. And let's um, talk real quick really before we move on to mindset, because I know mindset is next. How much money does this cost? I think that that's, that's a big one for people that are mm -hmm. kind of thinking about getting into this. What in Texas, depending on the program that you join, it can cost anywhere from, we have some super duper cheap programs, but they take forever to get through that are like right. $300. Right. And then they have some that you can get through, like Sasha said, in three weeks that cost you, I don't know, about $165 a class. So six classes times $165, plus you got to pay like 50, 60 bucks to get fingerprinted. So I would say all in all, and then you have to, to pay to take the test. Um, all in all, anywhere between $500 and $1,200 is typically what it's going to cost in Texas and in most states um, to go through the entire process to, to you right. know, sit the exam and get licensed. And then um, once they get licensed, something that a lot of people don't talk about um, is the board thing. Do you want to explain the board? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you're going to choose a local board, right? A local board is going to give you access to the MLS in your area. Um, that's where you're going to pay your board dues to. You're going to pay your state dues to that particular board. You're going to pay your national dues to that particular board. Now, research your boards because some boards come with more caveats than others in terms of what access you get with that particular MLS. Great example would be something called um, cloud CMA or cloud products. Certain boards will give that product for free. It's a great product. Then some boards don't have that. Okay. And then, for example, if you go back to our hometown, like where me and CP are, that board has that MLS is back in the 1980s. Okay. I haven't seen the MLS that old in God knows how long. So, certain boards come with more caveats in terms of giving you free websites, like the Houston Association of Realtors down there. They're excellent. So, if all my H Town people understand that, you just need to choose your local board. That's where you're going to pay your dues from. And it's very important to understand this with our particular brokerage, EXP Realty, we're pretty much everywhere. Okay. And that's going to dictate sometimes with the board of which brokerage that you can go to. But since we're with one brokerage, we can pretty much go anywhere we want to. So, so anything else you want to add there? Yeah. I mean, just to kind of explain, because I feel like you, you're talking to some of these folks that are brand new that don't even know what a board is. And I'll just let you guys know, like right now, like, you know what I mean? Um, you, you think that all of the money that you have to pay is just taking the classes and taking the test and all of that guys is not, you need to have a little bit of money saved up because once you pass your test and all of that, you're going to have fees to sign on to a brokerage. Most brokerages are going to charge you some sort of initial, um, initiation fee to sign on with them. Um, you're going to have to buy all of your collateral. So, you know, oftentimes you got to buy business cards and signs and things like that, but then you've got to join this board or an association. So what that is is in every single oh did we lose sasha um in every anytime that you get licensed in order to actually do your job um and all of the tools that you need to function your job uh, to function which is like using the mls which is where all of the houses are listed being able to open doors um and having access to do that all of that stuff and that access is given to you through a local association. So you have to join a local association in order to do your job. So it's essentially kind of like a real estate club. And that real estate club has all of these tools that they give to you, but you have to use those tools in order to do your job. So you have to join these associations. So um, that's essentially what it is. And they all have different things. Some have classes, some, you know, give you different certifications. So do your research on your area um, and, and, and you'll be fine. 
sense that it is an additional expense, which that is something that I was not aware of when I first started. So I paid like twelve hundred dollars to actually get my license. Then I had to pay like another six or seven hundred to join the board and get access to the tools that I needed. That, to that initial fee can be jarring. A lot of people are not ready for that because once you get your ready. license, the because here's the bottom line. You're not a real agent if you don't have access to the MLS yeah. because you can't right. work. You right. really can't work. You can't open up doors. Um, you need to be. You need that access to the board. The board is so important because if you don't have access to the MLS, if you don't have access to Superbox or the showing time or how you make appointments, then you really can't do you the do job. Your job. Right. right, and you have to join an association to get access. So, Absolutely. so that's just something that I, I want. As you guys are new and kind of going through it, understand you need to have the coins together because yes. it is not worth pain of heart. Um, you are not done once you pass your test. You got more this money. This is not the industry to go in completely broke. But no. But it, well, we that's not. Go ahead. Go ahead. Can we talk about that just a little bit? Because I know we're about yeah. to move over to mindset. Because you know, I say that, fam. But you both, but you know this. When I got into real estate, I was not doing well financially at all. You were at all, guys. So let me let me let me tell a little bit more of my story because I don't tell everybody this. When I got into real estate as a part time agent, guys, I was working four jobs. Okay, if you guys ever seen my my truck, my F one fifty, I was Uber driving my truck. I make a lot of money with that. I was working UPS at night, and then I was running a healthcare business in which physicians weren't even trying to pay me, and so that wasn't going so great, and I was selling real estate, and I was doing all this off of four or five hours of sleep, okay? So I understand the grind. I understand the need, and I understand when your back is to the wall. That was motivation enough for me because as a man, I have to make it happen. I have to make it happen for my family. So it wasn't great times. I never forget that time, but you know what? I was built for it. Right. Yeah. And awesome. I had to grind my way out of it. So when I say you don't want to start the business without money, you really don't. But if you get serious about this and you get on your grind man. and nothing else is stopping you, man, yeah. there's nothing like that motivation. That right. motivation right there drove me and drove my business. Well, because, awesome. like, Do you start any business with no money? I mean, some people, I've seen people do it. You, you know, people come into the business all the time. I know, but I'm just saying, like, yeah. again, uh, we're about to talk about mindset, which I think this is going to be really important is like employee versus business owner mindset, which right. is where you really have to be when you get into real estate. And like, I wouldn't open a shoe store if I didn't have money. Like, how am I going to open up a clothing boutique and I can't buy inventory? I can't put a sign outside of my store. I can't. Right pay for flyers to get people to come in like i don't understand how people expect to get into real estate start a real estate business and make you know tons of money and then like they have nothing to invest like they right, don't have right, gas right. money like how are you gonna go show a house you don't have gas like these are things that you need so it's it's right. you need to come in at least with a little bit of something something so you can do your job and this is and this is why we have such a high failure rate right here 80 percent of the people that get in this business quit within two years. Yep. And, and let me tell you why the two-year mark is so important. The two-year mark is important because now they got to spend more money to do the continuing education. Okay. Yep. And if you haven't sold anything and you've been paying your dues and paying your broker and paying your lease fees, you start realizing you don't really have a business. What you have is a very expensive hobby, hobby. <laughs> because you haven't treated it like a business. And there's a lot of agents out there right now with a very expensive hobby who buy the next great great coaching, they buy the, the next great thing that's out there, and they're saying, I, you know, this is where I'm at. You know, this is my silver bullet. This is what's going to fix me. No, no, no. That's not what's going to fix you. Every agent that I know, every agent that I know that has fallen out of the business has fallen out for the exact same reason. Everyone. Mindset. 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 100%. Mindset. They literally get into this um, with an employee mindset and guys, it is not, this is my favorite thing to talk about. So you guys have heard mm -hmm. me say like 15 times because it is, it is the single most important part of getting into real estate. It really is. And, and it is so underrated in real estate school. They don't talk about it. And I really think that that's a failure, um, on the curriculum in real estate school because they make it seem like you're going to take all these classes and you're going to walk out knowing how to you know sell houses and all of this and guys the reality and the business just comes to you no and that's not that's not what this is and so can i can i get on my let's go get, get on your soapbox i know you want to so mindset what does it take to be a successful agent employee versus business owner mindset 
Um, for those of you that follow me on social media, I just put out a video a couple of days ago that talked about this. Um, and I think that this is a, um, um, that there's some pathology behind this. Like this is, this is a, yes. a chronic issue and the, and, and what, to what I'm about to say, um, which is guys, from the time that we're little kids, we are literally told, like I said, like in math class and they teach you how to, you know, start solving math problems. They teach you from a very young age. Um, they tell you like how to identify the problem that you're going to solve. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they tell you, um, the method in which to solve it. And, and then you have to show your work and prove to them that you use their method or else you don't even make a good grade. And now all of these people that have gone through 12 years of secondary education, now they've gone to college and they've gone through post-secondary education where they're also instructed on how to identify the problem. They think at a little bit of a higher level. Um, and then they get jobs and they're told what time to show up and what problems their particular position is going to solve and how mm -hmm, to solve mm -hmm. it in a handbook and now everybody wants to be an entrepreneur and get into real estate and they cannot think for themselves absolutely absolutely anything else from this call if you don't take anything else from this is you are not an employee when you are in real estate nobody owes you anything your brokerage is not going to assign you somebody to sit down with that's going to teach you every single thing that you need to do. You're going to have to take initiative and build your business out your way based on your strengths, based, based on your weaknesses. And look at this like a real estate store and that your brokerage is simply the strip center shopping mall that you're paying rent to every month. Right. That that, that's your landlord. Yeah, that's your landlord. They're that's your landlord. Provide a safe space for your customers to come shop. But it ain't their job to tell you how to build a store. It's their job to make sure you're checking people out the right way during the transaction. Well, but it is not their job to set up the store. Let's take it one step further because Fam and I have this conversation all, all the time. Let me be very, very clear. I call these agents broken birds. Okay. And there's a bunch of broken birds out there right now. And what these folks are doing okay. is they jump. From brokers to brokers and brokers, they go from Keller Williams to EXP to Remax, look for someone to fix them. And they won't look in the mirror and say, I am the problem. Somebody fix me. And let me tell you guys, I was the problem with my business, why my business didn't thrive in the first two years. I did okay. But the moment, the moment I decided to look in the mirror and say, it's my fault, guess what I did? I turned off the phone. I turned off the TV. I wasn't watching first take in the morning. I was dropping my kids off and I was super serious about the business. It is a business and you need to come in with strategy. You need to come in with open ears so you can listen. Every let me be very clear. Pretty much every brokerage out there can is going to support you in some way and tell you how to be some type of a realtor. But they're not going to tell you how to be the realtor, how to pull out your strengths. Chauncey is successful in her own way. I'm successful in my own way. I'm the best agent that we Sasha do Chapman can be. We, we, don't don't do, do we don't do nothing the same. Nothing. But I know no. CP can sling houses, right? And she know I can as well. So your mindset has got to tell you how does this work. Let me, let me give a great example. I hear this from agents all the time. I don't like doing open houses. Open houses don't work. No, they don't work for you. No. That's because you're lazy. They won't, they won't be, I'm going to talk to some people right now. Your open houses aren't working because you're lazy. It's not anyone else. If you get out and you put like, what, two, three signs out for your open house, you say, oh, let me put a couple of signs out from open house. And I'm going to put those open house signs out, what, an hour before the open house. I don't do a Facebook ad. I don't do any marketing. I don't do any door knocking. And you expect people to come. Child, please. <laughs> Child, and please. Right? At the height, without open houses, what we do at Chapman Realtor, we do a whole lot more. And we'll be sitting there with 25, 35 different families coming through. Okay? Even when the pandemic is slowing down right now, I know people who aren't getting any showings. Okay. Right? And we're seeing one to three showings per month. And we're still getting it done. It's about what you do. Everything I, I, works. And everything and doesn't work. It's about your strengths. I think what you yeah. did really well, Sasha, is you understood coming from the medical profession that like your strengths were, were building out processes. Right, like that right, was right. So then you were like, all right, so how can I look at this real estate store, my real estate business, and I can build processes out within it? My strength has always been talking. I got the gift of gab. I got the gift of gab. I've got the gift of engaging people. And I'm really, really good on video. Um, I you know, was really good with social media. I have a marketing background. So then I decided to leverage that. Some people suck on video. 
So, so what we're trying to say is, is when you get into real estate, number one, you've got to take accountability yourself um, Absolutely. and look at what your strengths are and understand what that is and build your business around that. If you at church all the time, figure out how you can do first time home buyer classes at your church. If you're at the gym all the time, figure out how you can start sponsoring some spin classes at local gyms. If you, you know, spend a lot of time in the PTA, figure out how you can partner up with some schools and get some sort of referral program going. Like, Just make it part you, of your life. Correct. Make it a part yeah. of your life. Build your business around your life instead of building your life around your business. And number two is do not look for a magic bullet. So many agents yes. are, are constantly looking for like that one thing that they need to do that's going to get them the business. Just because it works for someone else doesn't mean it's going to work for you. I can't tell you right, how many people right. book me and they're like, man, I found you on YouTube. I want to start a YouTube channel. You suck at video. You literally just told me two <laughs> seconds ago. That you hate making videos, that you 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 stutter, you start sweating, you, you're stressed out, you just can't do it. Then why are you trying to make yourself do video? Because I do video and that's how I built my business. Maybe you're great at right. doing events. I suck at events. So understand what your strengths are, guys, and build the business around that because there is no handbook. I like your job where you know you're never asked to do something that someone doesn't teach you how to do. Um, in this, you're really going to have to be introspective, look within yourself, figure out what you're good at and build your business around that. We got someone, someone that was me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it was a lot of us. I, I kind of reconcile this this way. You have to be true to who you are in your voice. Mm -hmm. And let me be very clear about that. I believe we're in the age of real, real recognize oh. real. And so when someone even comes to me with this fake, phony scripting and trying to talk to me with a script, and uh, I, I, don't, I don't even like that. I get turned off by it, okay? But right. I remember when I first started in the business, I had everyone trying to tell me how to be a realtor like them and how to be a realtor from the 80s and from the 90s. And I'm like, I ain't down with this. And you got to wear a suit. Let me tell you guys something. I was a suit wearing guy. And for all the folks in healthcare, know me, I came, I came legit. I came straight up legit. I'm talking about I had my cufflinks. I had everything. All right. But then when I'm sitting down talking to someone about buying a $200,000 house, it felt like they were in a freaking board meeting. It was intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, no, <laughs> like, no, no, I don't know about this cat. And then I got rid of the suits. So I put in the polos on, didn't want to wear a suit every day. And I just started being me. I dropped the corporate talk. I just went back to more of who and I really truly am. And guess what? I sling houses all day. Now, here's the reality. I tell people this all the time. I am never, I tell my buyers and sellers this, I'm not going to call to you into losing your home. I'm not going to call to you into not having the ability to sell your home. I promise you I'm always going to have the difficult conversation. I will rip off that Band-Aid and we're going to talk straight up, okay? And if I'm telling you something you don't want to hear, it's because I'm sincerely trying to make sure you understand the message. That is my job, right? A lot of people want you to tell them what they want to hear. Don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah. And I see it with agents all the time. Fam, we have people coming in open houses, right? And they point out every flaw they can find. The buyer's agent point every flaw they can find in the house to the buyer, right? And the house is fine. There's nothing wrong with the house. I'm sitting there like, I bet that if, I bet that if it was not sold a house all year. And I <laughs> see the buyer be all into it. Like, oh, I love this house. And by the time the agent finished, they're deflated. They're defeated, they're yeah. defeated deflated. So yeah. you got to be who you are and you got to be true to yourself. But man, number one, it's a business. Number two, let's give that two. You cannot be lazy. You no. can't be lazy. You got to put that work in. And let me tell you something. When you're just putting yourself in the business of real estate and just doing the business, it naturally just comes to you. It's just falling comes your lap. To you. Right? They literally fall in your lap. When you get busy and just do things, it, it, it falls in your lap. But, but people literally think that they're going to go through their real estate classes get uh take their tests they're going to join on with a brokerage you're going to take a couple of little headshots they're going to post it on facebook and then everybody that they know is just going to make it rain houses on them and give them a call right. and say hey, can you be my realtor and that's not how it works guys this is again i really want you to think about um when you get into to real estate that it is like and and i use this analogy all the time so those of you that know me you've heard this before but it's it's how my brain worked and it worked for me which is I own a real estate store and my real estate brokerage is the strip center that I'm paying rent to every month for my store. So my job when I became a realtor was to stand, pretend like I was standing on the sidewalk looking at an empty shell of a store that I knew right, right. I, if 
$5,000 a month rent on next month and I have to build it from scratch. So what do I need? I need a sign outside. I need, you know, to figure out what my branding is going to look like. I need store hours. I need to figure out who it is that I want to walk through my store. I got to figure out, you know, what credit card machine point of sale system. That's going to be my CRM, what processes and systems. I'm right, gonna right, use. right. Get out from that. And I think if you guys look at it that way, that it will make a lot more sense instead of thinking about it like a job, because it is not a job. Nobody cares if you have to sell houses, which is why 80% right. of the agents never sell houses. And hey, let's let's stay let's stay with the story real quick. Let's talk about that, okay? okay. This is one. Let's talk about the story, guys, because most agents don't even know what their story is. What oh. is your story? They mm. don't. They have no idea. Like, what is the store? Let me tell you what your story is, okay? Your store is your brand. Your store is your social media presence. Your YouTube, your LinkedIn, your your Facebook, whatever. More importantly, your store is your website, and. Mm-hmm. 90% of agents have suspect jacked up websites. How in the world do y'all believe that Zillow and Realtor.com became who they became? It's because real estate agents have terrible websites. I'm going to tell you right now, when I go to a real estate agent's website and I see under contract pending, active auction contract, pending, yada, yada, they have a dirty website that has all the houses out there that have been bought. Right? That's crazy. Here's a, here's a cheap plug. Chapman Realtor Group, all ChapmanRealtorGroup.com, all we have or active homes on the market. So if the house goes under contract, it comes off in 15 minutes. So you're not wasting your time. That alone will attract people to us because we keep our business <coughs> clean. An agent who doesn't have a decent website, you know what it's like going to? It's like going to a grocery store and they have no groceries. It's like the pandemic. You go in for toilet tissue, you can't find a toilet tissue. You sell houses. If your website doesn't have your name, your logo, uh, anything telling people about who you are, right? At least a welcome video or something. How do you expect people to take you serious as a real estate agent? There are thousands of agents out here who have a very sucky store. Now, can you still sell some houses? Sure you can. You're just making it harder for yourself. And I get this question all the time. How does your website look like that? I constantly built on it over the last six years. You can too. That's your store. Yeah. No, I agree. Uh, John Tuggle said, I think another problem is uh, that it's so many distractions. Uh, I, you know, example, do the business this way, buy new systems. It is, but, yeah. but I, I feel like that's, that would be the case for any business that you have, right? Like, do you think the doctor's offices don't constantly have drug reps coming in, trying to sell them constantly. the next new drug constantly, trying to sell them the next newest piece of equipment that's going to help them, you know, be able to have that new cutting edge and your job as a business owner is to understand what your focus is in your business and focus on that. And, and, and so any tool or any resource or any system that's not aiding you in getting to that end goal, then you get rid of it. And so um, I would say that the only reason that you have distractions is because you have no focus. Yes. So if you focus, if you focus on what your end goal is, so, hey, my end game is going to be to sell this many houses to this particular type of person, um, you know, and you really focus in on that, then the distractions really aren't distractions because anything that's not helping you get there, you're not going to give your time to. So I would say start there if you find yourself being distracted. Yeah. Here's a really good question right here. We got fam. Something just popped up. What, if, what advice do you have for the most advantaged thing you can do as a new realtor? Okay, so this is going to sound somewhat generic, but I'm going to be very specific about it, okay? The most important thing you can do right now as a brand new realtor is A, master your schedule, B, learn your craft, okay? I can't tell you how many times I mentor a lot of people, fam does as well. We're both certified mentors with EXP. So if you don't have transactions, do you know your contract? Do you know how to write? put together a buyer's rep agreement or a listing agreement? Do you understand that? So go to the classes that make sense, but don't just stay in class all day. But you've got to master your schedule and start building on what you're going to be doing. So for example, in the morning, first thing I do from 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock is lead generation. I don't want to talk to anybody else. Okay? All right, I got to change it when the kids start school or not, but start master that schedule, lead generation. Then I do my follow-ups. I block when I do my YouTube and my video time. I block when I do my video editing. Okay, that's only going to happen once a week because here's what's going to happen. 
if you become a successful agent, you start getting deals, right? The public works nine to five, which means they want to see houses from five to nine. Okay, if you don't have your schedule put together and now you're out there showing homes, guess what's going to happen in the evening? You're not going to be calling and doing and working your leads. If you're not working your leads and making those phone calls and constantly following up, you may have two or three deals going. But then when those, once those two or three deals going, guess what? You start back over. So many agents start back over again and again and again. Thank Master you. your schedule. Be disciplined. Super, super disciplined about what you're doing, when you're doing, and if it's value at a time. And ask yourself what question, fam? Would you actually pay yourself? Oh, yeah. for work? Would you pay yourself you for pay the work that you did? Um, and I would add on top of that, um, Miss Queen Brown, um, something that I did when I first started and something I advise all new agents to do right in the beginning is for whatever reason, new agents feel like their job is to know everything that you need yes. to know. Lending and title and inspections and building and construction and you don't. So what I would advise for you to do is while you're still in real estate school and you're right in that beginning is you need to never eat lunch by yourself. Don't ever Absolutely. eat lunch by yourself. And what I mean by that is every single day, you need to be meeting with someone in a field that complements your business. That's going to be a referral partner that, that your, your clients are going to ask you questions that you can't answer, but you can refer to them. So you need to, on Mondays, have lunch with you know a different lender for the first month that you're in the business. And you want to talk to them and understand what their processes are and like why you would want to use them and what their specialties are and what their programs are. So then you have a little bit more confidence about how loans work. And be honest. Hey, I'm new. Can you explain to me how this works? How does down payment assistance work? Like, you know, what, what's the minimum credit score people need to have? What questions do I need to ask people before I send them over to you? So, you know, do that with a lender. Do the same thing with inspectors. Do the same thing with insurance agents. Yeah. Do the same thing with title reps. You know, do the same thing with... Uh, maybe a general contractor or someone in construction. So make sure that you're doing that because what that did for me um, is in my first month, I gobbled up so much information that I was confident enough to have conversations with people and I wasn't scared because even if I didn't know the answer from some of those conversations that I had, I knew who I could pick up the phone and call right then right, and they right. were in my back pocket to get that question answered. And it gave me a lot more confidence to move forward where a lot of new agents are really just like frozen and they're afraid to do anything because they don't feel like they know everything and it's not your job to know everything. It's your job to know somebody that right. knows everything. So You're spend the your connector. time those people. Yes. Yes. So I would and, and it's okay to say if you don't if you don't know, it's say like, I don't know. Let me go find out. No, I, I, I do that. I still do that to, to this day. Like, oh, I don't know. That's a good question. Never been in this scenario before. But let me just say this. And this is one thing that I love about our network. And this is call it a plug. What do you want to call it? But we are constantly having conversations about the business. You want to be around people who are competent in the business, who know how to do this and know how to and have a variety of skills and who will challenge your thinking. As you guys can see, Chance and I don't think a lot alike. We have similar mindsets in terms of how we want to go forth in our business and be successful. However, we both know what we need to do is bigger than what I can do on my own and what she can do on her own. We constantly help each other out. You need people like that. And I will tell you this. If you think, if you think for one thing that you have to be inside of a building and you have to be inside of an office in order to get that type of coaching, the type of training, the type of support, you're absolutely wrong. The real estate office is a trap. You don't sell offices, you sell houses. And uh -huh. houses is a product that's out in the world. The people I talk to on a consistent basis now, I have a stronger relationship with them than I ever had with anybody else at the other brokerage that I was at in the office. Why? Because we're constantly discussing the business. We're constantly challenging each other and we're not just shooting the shit like I was at the other office. Or I'm trying to get work done and people are not respecting my time blocking. Or I'm not respecting it myself because I'm talking too much. OK, so you can do this. You can absolutely do this. Being a successful real estate agent, it, it does not have to be hard, but you have to just do what it is that you like and you love, because don't force yourself to do something that you don't want to do. If you don't want to cold call, don't cold call. Right. I, I would give this other advice. You need to go with your focus, with your focus. OK, a inch wide, but a mile deep. Some of the best agents that I know out there right now. Master one thing, 
They, they do short sales very, very good. They call expires very, very good. They do open houses extremely well. You don't have to do everything because everybody else is telling you to do it. If you don't like it, you won't do it well, and you're not going to want to get up every morning to do it. But if you like and love what you're doing, that's a different story. Same. No, I agree. Totally different story. All right, fam, yeah. do you have any parting words for these folks? Um, yeah, uh, the last thing that I would just say is, um, again, we've talked a lot about being a business owner. I want you guys to focus on that. So any of you that are in real estate school, pay attention in real estate school, whatever, get through your classes. But spend the most of your time leading up to getting into real estate, um, doing more research and reading up on being a business owner. So you need to understand return on investment. You need to understand marketing. You need to understand lead generation. Um, you need to understand all of those things. Um, oh, and Chandra said, and go sell some shit. Yes, absolutely. That is my mantra at all times. But focus up, more on, on being a, a business owner, even more so than you are focused on learning just everything in the ins and outs about real estate. And all of that will come over time. If you have a smart level head about uh, opening up and running a business, then you'll be good. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to drop my calendar link down here in the chat for you guys. If you do want to talk about the business, you can always schedule time with me, talk about one on one. And if you have never gotten into the business, you're just thinking about doing it. Um, I do have a free class you can take. I get to the course down at the and link as well of just walking you through what you need to become a real estate agent. And then our network, we do training every Monday at mm -hmm. 10 a.m. I do another training on Tuesdays at 12 p.m. You're more than welcome to see what we're about. Try it before you buy it, so to speak, and just get a better understanding of what EXP Realty can offer you. Now, this was not just an EXP pitch. This was about you getting in the business and what you can do with it. So I'll, let me just say this. Real estate has changed my life. Okay. Right. Financial right. freedom like never before. I love what I do. Do I work a lot? Yes. But it doesn't feel like work because I love what I'm doing. All right. right. And build some wonderful relationships that I know I got friends uh, who are going to not not just friends. Let me just say that I got friends who are business partners that we're going to be able to grow each other, grow each other's businesses for a very, very long time. CP and I are actually from the same hometown, for those who don't know. And we didn't talk to each other that much back in Texarkana. But now here we are. We work and talk all the time. And when she needs me, I got her. When she needs me, I mean, when I need her, she's got my back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> Go and focus on uh, starting a business, understanding, getting some business acumen under your belt. Um, focus on what your strengths are and don't think that there's one way. There's a million ways to skin this cat. Um, but yeah, the, the tap in with Sasha. He's a great resource for you. And feel free to uh, go to my website as well, which is chaunceyfam.com. Uh, and you can book a call with me at the top where it says um, connect with Chauncey, choose pick Chauncey's brain. And you can hop on a call with me as well if you'd like to chat um, about anything real estate wise. You guys have our cell phone numbers down below. And for those who are already in in the business right now and you're struggling, let me explain something to you. This market is shifting. This is the market where you eat. This is the market where you eat. This is the market where you eat. Yeah. Like I'm talking like you starving at the buffet line. And if you don't yeah. know how to do that, you need to reach out to your boy. Okay, <laughs> this is where you eat. This is this is where you work and then come come December. You go on a last vacation, you relax for the whole month because you don't have to work. Yeah. This is what you eat. All right. Okay, guys. We're gonna be doing this less chat real estate. I'm gonna do this every Tuesday at the exact same time, six six PM. We're gonna yeah. have various people on. Um, so next week we're gonna be talking to consumers. We're gonna be talking about the buyer buy down strategy with my boy Michael DeBacker, excellent lender. We're gonna be doing all that. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, feel free to reach out. You have our calendar links and we'll hear for you. All right, guys. Y'all take care. Peace.